Ruby, we're in the way room at Punch Town Race Course. Do you break out in a sweat coming in here now? National Hunt wear them, your leather boots. <laughs> I think I used to break out in a sweat. Flash, flashing back dance and beating you in the stairs hurdle. You did put up a card of star here now, mind you, so. <laughs> card of star, I got beaten by Tour, Under Soul, Card of Star, Queen Vega. I got beaten them all here, Frank. A lot, a lot, yeah. Uh, Punch some week for me in the latter years of my career, when I finished jump riding at least, uh, quite weak for the flat. Come racing on Tuesday, day out with the lads, maybe go on the Wednesday. Great social occasion for me that time of the year. But it was, it is a great social occasion, but even for us as kids, like I'm from Kill, which is four and a half miles that direction, York and Cullum, which is the same that mm. way. Like, it was always a social occasion. We used to get half days in Kill. What did you get in Kilcullen? Got a half day on a Wednesday, but uh, when it was a three day festival, my mother would blag a half day on Tuesday and Thursday because uh, you'd be over for the first race, second race maybe. And uh, it wasn't really all about the racing back then when you were a kid. <laughs> it had the best playground ever. So it did the old punch sound, it had a zip line, it had everything out the back of the stand. So we were let loose for the day. That was here, right where we are now. Mm. In the old, like, back in the old punch sound, the wearer was over at the entrance, but that playground was somewhere along where we're sitting now where the new air room is but yeah it had that playground then you had the fairground was in the middle when I first started coming and then it moved up to past the stands and now it's off down there somewhere near the big event centre but you used to have to get a stamp on the way out yeah stamped on the way out yeah say so yeah pay your money on the way in and get stamped <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no it was and we got in kill we get I think it was a couple of half days as well I know the schools in Nace closed Mm. I was wondering why you didn't go to school at Nace because you were guaranteed to get punches down <laughs> off. Um, but it was just part of it. And I can remember coming in 80, 85 to watch Barney Burnett win in the BMW Novice Hurdle, mm. which is the two mile Novice Hurdle on the first day. And then coming in 86 for the match, down on a big house, a book house even. It was up at the fence past the stands. Were you here in 86? Can you remember 86? I can remember, but I didn't make the cut to get the trip here that day. But uh, looking back on YouTube and seeing it over the years, of course, something else fun. Like when you think about it, talking about novices not running now against older horse, whatever, you know, a match race, put up, bring your horse, put up your money. Yeah, and it's funny, like, um, I don't think everybody put up, there was a bit of wheeling and dealing done to put up the money or where it came from, but like the, a match race is excluded from the rules of racing now. Mm. It can never happen again. Not in Ireland, anyway. Um, but like it was amazing, the Gold Cup winner taking on the Champion Chase winner. And like even for the two of them to go to the old second last fence, which was on the home turn at the angle, and to come away from there, Don Run, jump left, Buckhouse goes down a rinner under Tommy Carmody, um, Tony Mullins. You know, it was, it was amazing to watch, and she just outstayed him. Tony Mullins didn't get rider in England in the Gold Cup. Gets rider here in April. Must have been a lot of pressure on that day. Well, I'm sure there was, but sure, did you ever know, looking at Tony, he was under pressure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and I, look, it was, it was an iconic, an iconic day mm. and an iconic race. And it was wonderful to see, I suppose, now with sponsorship and everything else that goes with it, you kind of want the Gold Cup winner to run in the Gold Cup and the Champion Chase to run in the, champ in the Champion Chase. And as I said, the rules of... of I think the regulation now excludes a match anyway, so we won't really? see another one. Shame that three-day festival back then, of course, it's five now. Yeah, actually, look, it, it moved the times, and it. Look, plenty of people would argue that it, it it got diluted as it moved, but I don't think Punchestown was ever solely reliant mm. on its championship races. It always had so much more. Uh, the bank races here, like I can remember Dad riding in the bank races. I remember getting a fall at the old double off a horse of P.P. Hogan's called Annie Crack and breaking his wrist. But you had the Ladies' Cup on Tuesday and the Latouche on Thursday. But the Latouche back then was confined to Hunter Chasers. Mm. Like, we look at the Banks races now, like Tiger All, Delta Work beating Tiger All, Tiger All winning a couple of them. Like, when the original bank races were here, horses that had run on the track couldn't run them. You, you never seen them. You didn't know what they were. They were point know, of pointers. They were literally yeah. point of pointers. Yeah. The Ladies' Cup was a maiden. Our mm. winners of won. And the Latouche then was, was an open renewal. But it was restricted to, to very different horses. And when they expanded to, to four days and then to five, yeah, they added more bumpers and a couple more bank races. And it was always the farmer's race, <laughs> yeah. uh, the local hunt race, uh, which is... Yeah, I suppose part of the tradition of Punchestown, but it has developed into five days and it's huge. It's huge for the economy around here. You know that as well as I do, like Big between Nace, Kilcullen, um, K 
Kildare. Like, it's far, the spread is massive. Ballymore, Kill, Johnstown, like even you listen to people trying to get hotels, not that many of them around here. No. People no. staying back as far as the Green Isle and City West. Yeah. And, you know, it, it is huge for the economy. It is, and um, it's just the end of the season, isn't it? It's the right time, culmination of the jump season. You get a lot of the horses that clashed at Cheltenham, maybe one or two went to Aintree, and they all land in here usually to have one more go. Yeah, and it takes a bit of doom. And I think it's brilliant too that, that the season ends here. I know the first time I was champion jockey in 99, the season didn't end till the end of May in Kilbegan. Mm. That's where I was champion jockey, was on that day in Kilbegan. So they brought it to coincide with Punchestown, which I think is the right thing. And um, look, there's been some great championship battles here, Willie and Gordon in, in latter years. Um, I know I chased Davy Russell in here one year and won and chased him in here another year and he beat me. But it, it was, you know, there can be great different stories that add to it that make it the end of the season. And look, we, look we're going to talk about them, but some brilliant horses have come here and won. Just on that 1999 season, he got to ride Imperial Call. He was a rare winner of an Irish Gold Cup three years ago. Prior to that, with Conor Dwyer riding, on a little bit of a downward slope, he changed trainers. You got on him, though. I, I did. I can remember leaving Nays Rugby Club, which is halfway between here and Kill, and listening to Conor winning the Irish Gold Cup on him in Leperstown. Uh, Charlie had been riding him, Charlie mm. Swan. Charlie had the ride life for Lord. Connor got on him, won the Irish Gold Cup, went to Cheltenham, won the Cheltenham Gold Cup. I didn't have a ride in Cheltenham that year. I was there. I was standing at the back of the winner's enclosure, watching him coming into the parade ring in the freezing cold. I think he was one of maybe four Irish winners, loving around Florida Pearl, Imperial Call. can't remember the fourth one. But um, it, it was just such a unique... It wasn't Florida Pearl, it was Wither or Witch even. Um, it was just a, 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 you know, a different time. I didn't think then that a couple of years down the road, I would end up on Imperial Call. And I went out to ride him here in the first running of the Heineken Gold Cup. Richard Dunwoody was riding Florida Pearl, Tony McCoy was riding Doran's Pride, mm -hmm. and I rode Imperial Call for Ray Hurley then. He'd taken over from Fergie Sutherland, uh, booked out, made all the running, jumped from fence to fence, and the rest was history. And it was like, to go by, I was 19, to go by the line that day, and looking into the crowd, at, and just to pull up at the gate, with lads I'd gone to school with. To think like 12 <laughs> months earlier, like we were getting ready to do our leaving cert and here you were winning on him and they're all standing there watching you. It was, yeah, it was a magic day. But he's speaking of 99, I remember being here in 98 and the rain. Mm. It started to rain in the 98. That was the first year of the new Punchestown, wasn't it? It was before it punched yeah. The new one was 2001 because uh, the meeting was run between Ferry House and Leperstown. Mm. Uh, Moscow Flyer beat. They used to back fall the second last and Leperstown yeah. and Moscow Flyer won the champion hurdle. I, I think I won the champion chase on Mikko's Dream, who ended up, who had been favourite in Papillon's Grand National. And I won, <laughs> I won the two mile chase to him the following year. But uh, I remember here on the rain, and Nicky Hen Mick Fitzy rode, won the champion chase on Big Matt That's right. for Nicky Henderson, yeah. and Nicky standing in the ring like a drowned rat. And the picture is still on the wall, like there beside the scales. That's right, yeah. But um, it, it, it's, it's a funny one, like you can get beautiful weather here, but if it starts to rain, it just lashes down on this place. The one thing that I've noticed over the years is the change of the track. You know, from when we started riding here, the way it's developed, it's got, obviously got wider. It used to be the inner track, you know, in the winter, but that's yeah. gone now, so it's just all uh, in the main it, part. It is, and, and the hurdle track, I suppose when the bank races changed, with, when the festival went from three to four, and they opened the bank races to the older horses, and then they started to change what, they were bank races when I remember them first, they changed to cross-country races. So they added in more jumps, and when they would go across the race course at the ditch down the hill, out to the herd's garden, um, they started they put more jumps out there, and then they started doubling back on themselves. So when they took out the original bank course, which was inside the chase track, over time they developed that and brought the hurdle track, which was on the inside, out beside the chase track. So the hurdle track over time, from when we started, has become a much bigger, fairer track now. Mm. And now it's like it's both courses are just under two miles, a mile and seven around the hurdle track and the chase track. Like, I mean, you only jump in a two mile chase here, you don't jump any fence twice. And in a two mile hurdle, you only jump the last hurdle twice. Of course. It's incredible. And the second last you mentioned back then, it was on the bend, the yeah. original second last, and you can make lengths or lose, lose lengths at it. You often see lads just disappear into the corner of the yeah, picture. Yeah, but I won the, the Gold Cup in Comanche Court in 2000. It was a couple of fallers at the third last, and I remember Comanche jumping it, and jumping one of the loose ones on the ground. 
he jumped over one of the horses on the ground. And I have, actually, there's a picture of me, and I have my right leg is on top of the saddle. And I'm on him, and he's sideways in me there. He landed, looked at the loose one, pinged the loose one, right? That was the third last. But when he landed and I got back on him, we were heading inside the second last, third, second last fence, having to wheel him back out to get him on the track to jump the second last on the bend. And then he came storming down the outside uh, to catch Norman Williamson on, I can't think of the horse's name, Mood him maybe, could have been Mood him or something like that. Mm. But uh, he came home with, with gusto and that was three, the end of a, an unbelievable three weeks or more. On the Grand National, did he? He'd won, yeah, Papillon had won the English National. Comanche won the Irish National, Comanche Court, and then he came here to win the Heineken. It was only his second win over fences. He was a novice. He won the Irish Grand National as a maiden, um, a maiden chase. So we're coming here to win on him. He jumped the old second last. Um, I think it changed when the track was closed then in 2001 for drainage mm. and reconstruction of the facilities. And uh, the second last fence moved into the home straight. I was going to slag you this morning, actually, speaking of 2099, Risk of Thunder, fantastic <laughs> horse. I said, I think he broke his leg off him in Czechoslovakia, but it was raced before it and uh, that winter and then into the spring, it came, the spring was good, the winter wasn't so good. Oh, the winter was bleak, uh, like lots of winters can be. Went to Par de Beach set to ride Risk of Thunder um, in the Par de Beach and Shannon found him, went with him, broke my leg off him in the warm up race. Didn't even get to ride Risk of Thunder and the uh, rest is history. Uh, four months out with a broken leg, came back. Papillon won, Comanche won, Comanche won again, and away life goes. Mm. But like Risk of Thunder, I mean, seven Latouches here Savage. in the Bulger, John yeah. Thomas, Ken Whelan. Um, I remember the all wear room, was it before and owned them? Uh, the one, uh, Hayes, uh, uh, Noreen Hayes, was it? Yes, yeah, Ken Whelan has tried them, wasn't yeah. it? The all wear room, and yeah. uh, then obviously Sean Connery was the owner oh, name, if you like, yeah. for End of Bulger, yeah. Yeah, he was an incredible horse, and I remember going to Enders, uh, we used to ride out in Enders on a Monday and going in to tack up Risk one morning and, and looking at him. And he was so offset <laughs> of his joint. Yeah. His hoof was almost, like wasn't really under his leg. It was completely, torn, it wasn't even turned out, it was offset. And I'm standing looking at him thinking, something wrong with him. And going back across the yard to get in there <laughs> and coming back and he says, he's always like that. And or that's the way, just the way he was. But to be honest about confirmation and horses being correct, like he was, in no way correct, <laughs> but like he won seven at Touches, he was an incredible racehorse, um, and he was a standing dish here. Yeah, he used to be a draw in his own right, wasn't he? And uh, yeah. I remember Sean Connery being here for one of his wins mm. at least, maybe maybe he's here for more, but definitely one. And uh, you know, it's just one of the magical days at Punch Town, the crowd's in, he went and delivered thankfully, and uh, the reception he got when he came back in. Massive, mm. massive. There's been some massive receptions here, but like, there was a couple of great bank horses and people associated with great bank horses. Obviously spot the difference as well. Um, you know, it was, was magic around here. Uh, Peter Marr with Bally Broker Bridge. You know, there's, you know the, the cross country here is very different to Chatham. There still is banks mm. um, and the banks are more thick. They're a different jump to the one in, in Cheltenham, but uh, it is a unique test, and I think they're great races. Istabrak was a horse that probably we grew up with as young jockeys. You know, he came on the scene. Charlie Swan was in his pomp. Aidan O'Brien, you know, was making the transition just from the hill to Bally Dial, but he was just a bit different, wasn't he? And uh, everything he'd done, and the way he was campaigned as well. He was, you know, he used to run quite regularly through the year. He'd start in Tipperary. Uh, I remember the first time I ever rode against him was in Tipperary. I rode a horse called Native Darig, um, who Richard O'Muddy won a big handicap hurdle on here. The previous year. First time I ever rode in England, um, went to the Old Trophy. That's right. We, we got to lay in the ground for two hours, nearly yeah. didn't make it. And uh, I rode to Jan, he finished third. And I Mick, rode Native Darry. Mick, Mick Fitzgerald went in Charpagal, maybe? Could have done. Could have done. Yeah. Uh, I remember that being in the taxi. Cheap. <laughs> um, the panic. But Native, I remember I used to back going by me in Tipperary. Mm. And it was just like a Porsche driving by a Mini. Just the, yeah. the speed and the power of them. Um, I didn't ride too much against them. Um, stage affair, like obviously Moscow Flyer came on, but he was an incredible racehorse, Mr. Brack. And he started in Tipperary, then he'd more, his campaign was pretty much the same every year. But he, look, he went to entry and came back and won here. And that was a hard thing to do. Yeah. Cheltenham yeah. main three punches down. You know, to win at all three, like Sprinter did it years mm. later, but it's an incredibly hard thing to do. But I suppose that's a bit like the Triple Crown in America, Fran. Yeah. Not very many horses do it for a reason. No, no, exactly. It sorts them out. It does. Yeah. And it, 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 you, people say, like, oh, run them more often. We don't see them enough. You, history will tell you. 
it's not as easy to win as people think. I was in um, Ballydoyle twice a week. I was making transition from jumping to flat or football camps, I suppose. But I, I got brought up to Leopardstown one day to ride Theatre World, Charlie Road, Istrabrack, and did two flights of hurls, maybe six foot wide, eight foot wide, is it? And uh, we went two miles in Leopardstown. I've never gone as quick in my life. And I, I don't know if you rode Theatre World, but... I did. He was, <laughs> I rode him in a golf hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> he was top bar. Yeah. But so was Istabrak. And like Istabrak got a couple of falls. They were in Leperstown, um, not here in Punchestown, but like those real good two mile hurdlers. Like a hurricane fly used to be the same. Mm. Like he never ended up on the floor touch wood, but like he was the same. The margin for error was so small. And like he was, I remember coming here to ride him. Uh, he missed Cheltenham, missed the novice hurdle in Cheltenham. And uh, he came here to beat. Um, the horse of Knowles, the Paul won on native. Derek? No, be my native horse, the Paul. Go, go native. native. Go yeah. native, yeah. Um, he came here to beat Go Native in the novice hurdle. And then he came back the following year, I was injured. Paul won the champion hurdle on him. And then he won three more champion hurdles after that. And he came back then and was second to jet ski um, on, his, on his last year. But like, he was an incredible horse that you could, you could ride with. Uh, he'd win Morgiana's here at the start of the year. Like, mm. Pork and Fly's year would start and end in Punchestown. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it was always a lucky track for, for him and for Willie and for me. What separates them good hurlers? Isterbrax, we talk about the inch to give a top hurricane flies. The appetite for it or the ability you to never, make a length in the air? Yeah, or? but I, I think when you were riding them, you never considered the jump. Mm. You knew they were jumping. You just kept the pressure on. And they were either going to find a way to put in a half a stride or they were going to stand back. And they never spent any time in the air. You never had to slow them down. You never had to set them up. He just kept the pressure on and they kept jumping and they were they obviously had speed but they were tough horses as well mm. mr black was an incredible horse so was was hurricane fly um but like they were just they never knew when they were beaten but it was just the, you could ride them at the last couple of hurdles when you aggressive needed. on them like, yeah, yeah yeah always be aggressive and knowing they were going to find a way yeah and uh, speaking of hurricane fly willie Mullins, you're with him since you're what 16 17 Chance ride you picked up in Leperstown one day, Willie couldn't do the weight. I know, yeah. Uh, young Fenora uh, won a bumper in Leperstown. Um, but we've had phenomenal success here. Uh, I think back, I was actually going through a few records last night. I think I managed to pick as many wrong ones in Punchestown as Willie's as the right ones. Um, but he brings everything to Punchestown. Mm. Like in his eyes, this is the back end of the season here. And then the ones that bounce out of here fresh will go on to all tie. Mm. Um, but like, he loves Punchestown and you look at, it's, I suppose, a little bit, you look at Willie's strike rate the week before Punchestown and then looking at the week after Punchestown, like he runs every horse in his eyes that's fit and well, mm. will run at Punchestown. This is the end of the season. And, you know, he, Dublin Racing Festival, Cheltenham, couple at entry, Punchestown, maybe a few of Fairy House that fit in, but like they're, they're, the, they're the big meetings and you look, I remember coming here, was it 2017? Or he was a good bit behind Gordon. Mm, and yeah. coming in here and- uh, 300 grand maybe, something like that. More, maybe, yeah. A yeah. bit more, I'd say. A bit more, I'd say. And the pressure and the build up and the amount of horses Willie was bringing. <laughs> and uh, look, it, it, it swung around in, in Willie's favour, but like that added some spice to that week. Yeah, yeah, it carried it through the week till the third, fourth day maybe in that yeah, was, yeah. I think till, till Week Club Rave probably won the, the champion hurdle with Patrick. That probably swung it, that mm. swung it in the, the way that actually Gordon needed it, needed a bit of luck. I think it was back home then the following day in the four-year-old hurdle that, that sealed the deal. Sealed the deal. Mm. Um, but the momentum had definitely gone with his way by Wicklow Brave winning the champion hurdle. I remember thinking that, like, I talk about you no know, times you think, like, do you try too hard? Jack Adam, I rode him in the, in the Gold Cup on the Wednesday and Size and John beat him. But, like, I probably if I was a little cooler on him, he might have won. You were trying to make it happen. Trying to make it happen. Mm. Uh, he missed the last, but he wasn't even missing the last, but just trying to make it happen. And at times, you can be guilty of trying too hard. Ruby, we're going to see Willie Mullins, Crown Champion trainer again this year at Punchestown. You were there in the early days, though. It's grown a bit bigger since then. <laughs> a lot bigger. Um, and look, it's been incredible to watch, to be part of. Mm to from where it started, where himself and Jackie started really, and where it is now, uh, is incredible. But I think when you listen to him 
talk about different decisions he made and different things he did. And he talks about, you know, selling with or which and selling, not selling all of them, but keeping a bit so it meant he kept them to train. That was the day, you know, his decision that day that he was going to be a racehorse trainer and not a pin hooker. A trader, yeah. Your trader, yeah. 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 And that he wanted to be where he is now. Mm. And they kept pumping the money back into it, the investment in gallops and stables and staff. It's, look, it's an incredible business. Um, and that's what it is, it's a little empire. And it, it, it's incredible to be part of it. And then look, investment came with owners, but owners have to be attracted to something. It was probably success. Mm. Um, and the ambition that went with it. And yeah, look, it is, you saw this year in Cheltenham was, was fat, unbelievable. Um, but we've, or I have been part of unbelievable punches towns with him, where he has monopolised just like that and trained so many winners here. And if you could have picked the right ones, you could have had unbelievable punches towns. I could have had unbelievable <laughs> punches towns too. Ten winners, yeah. I think we did. I think one year I did have ten or eleven. Mm. And you know, it wouldn't surprise you. Did he train sixteen or seventeen here one year? It, it, he. This is part of the season for him. Yeah. His horses are coming here. You know. Challenge yeah. Man Punchstone. Yeah. And it works for some, it doesn't work for others. Mm -hmm. I mean, God's Own beat Fatour in the two mile chase here. Fox Norton beat Under So in the two mile chase here. Like, they're not unbeatable, mm. but they come here trying their best. Um, and he wants all these horses for here. And it's huge prize money, it's a big meeting, big crowds. Like this year, nobody here last year called off the year before. Mm. Like, the place could be rocking this year. If the Irish National meeting is anything to go by. <laughs> Like this will be good. <laughs> Cheltenham, Irish National, like yeah. it's mobbed. And the entry, I mean, I, I'm, I suppose you're, they're UK crowds, but I'm just thinking, like to me, the crowd on Irish National Day, like, it, that could be replicated here. Or five days. days. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be manic. <laughs> and uh, speaking of trainers, you balanced William Paul Nichols for six, eight years. Yeah, yeah, look, that was was an incredible time in my life and it was incredible to be part of it. But it was great that when I was there, Paul brought horses here too. Yeah. Like Twist Magic won here, Mastermind won here. Caught and pulled up. Caught and pulled up, <laughs> them and pulled up. Neptune won two Punchestown Gold Cups. Uh, you know, Paul mm. brought them here. And then he came last year with Clan de Zobo after being, England being blitzed in, in, in Cheltenham. Paul Nicholas came here, won the Hunter's Chase and Clan de Zobo won the Gold Cup. I thought that was good to see for the sport, mm. that he was going to come and take on the Irish in Ireland. And you look, when you look back at the results, you look at all the different horses that won here. Like you can, you and I can both remember Richard Dunwoody winning a Viking flagship here for the Duke. Yeah. Back in '93, like there was, you know, I, I sometimes look at it and wonder why don't more English trainers come? The prize money is huge. It's a brilliant race track. It's the end of the season. I always wonder why more don't come. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Harry, Harry Fry. Yeah, you know, like, he won here. He yeah. won two. He won two. Uh, stairs hurdles, mm. and there's loads of them. Look, we were talking about Anzum, you clan the Zobo last year. There's so many of them, and the, I remember Chalk winning on Blazing Bailey here um, years ago. Like, there's loads of English horses winning here. Just on Nickel, Paul Nichols, another championship this year in England, Ruby. He's uh, remarkable in his own way, but to approach himself and Willie Tate to the game, two different personalities. <laughs> two different people, two different <laughs> yeah. ways of training, two different establishments. Um, you know, both extremely successful, but two completely different ways of, of doing it. Mm. And to me, that just shows why training racehorses will always be an art mm. and not a science. Yeah. Sprinter sat crowds here in 2013, I think. Wow, it was incredible, if, wasn't it? If you walk, uh, walk around Punchstown in the first two days, you'd probably find a lot of flat jockeys floating <laughs> around. It's kind of, they're two days off, no race for the week here in Ireland and uh, until the weekend, so. Came across obviously for a day out with the lads and he pitched up one to nine favourite, but he may as well have been 20 to one or everyone backed him because the reception he got. But you see it and you go racing, so you might see a crowd of that magnitude. I was going to say at the Irish Derby, you probably haven't mm. seen it in years. No. Uh, Champions Weekend, possibly mm. in Leppistown. Yeah. Still not quite as big as that. No. Like getting for, there, but. Getting there, yeah. but like for a race score to come here. Sprinter Sacra, Tuesday, Punchestown, traditionally probably the smallest crowd. Mm. You see all the crowd Sprinter Sacra brought here. Like the movement of people. Like you wouldn't, you don't see that at many race courses. No. Like people just moving with them from the stable yard, into the parade ring, out to the track. It was just, it was brilliant to see. And it was brilliant, like Nicky, obviously 
Barry must have pushed, but uh, you know, Nicky brought, he'd been to Cheltenham, been to Aintree, Barry must have pushed him, he came here, and the crowds came to see it. Responded to the day, yeah. like, and uh, I remember being down to the last fence, and the amount of people on the infield, you know, like, yeah. obviously lads that had passes to get out onto the track, but uh, it was just a sight to behold, and it was. the appreciation the crowd had for him. And I remember here, uh, Caught the same, now he pulled up, or as you said, I pulled him up. Um, <laughs> he pulled up, and I can remember actually coming in after pulling him up, and Isabel was quite young, Elsa was only a baby, but I did think that would be the end of Cardo Star that day when he pulled mm. up here. Now obviously Paul Nichols brought him home, worked his magic, back to Haydock, Kempton, and then ultimately he pulled up in the Gold Cup, but um, I still think, you know, people do a lot of giving out about horses that don't run, and they quickly forget about the horses that did run and disappeared and, and do run. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that's Paul Nichols' best achievement, getting him back to that level? Yeah. It was, it was time and I think it was the bravery to go again with a mm. horse of his reputation. There looked to be a lot more to lose than there probably was to gain and it took guts to go again with him and he went again with him and he was convinced, I remember having dinner with him in Haydock the night before, like he was bullish. He was, he, <laughs> this will win. I'm tell, he kept saying it and he was right and then back to the King George and he beat long run again. But I still ride him, ride him a bit more aggressively then? Oh, he's gone slower. Yeah. Um, you had to be more aggressive mm. on him. <laughs> like everything, he slowed down like everybody with age, Fran. Maybe you're still bombing around. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, of course you had to change tack on him a little mm. bit as he got older. But like he, when he won his first Gold Cup, he was keen. He wasn't keen by the time he won his fifth King George. <laughs> and just on that, talk of the jump season the last two years at least anyway, horses not running, should they run more? He was a remarkable when you look back what he'd done from A3 right through to the Gold Cup in 2006. Yeah, he was, but he was brilliantly placed. And he had a few niggles along the way. I mean, he got injured in Exeter and he had a crush and fall, crouch and fall down the champion chase. Um, a Moscow Flyer actually galloped all over him. Um, and then he came back and had those five, six years. Um, but he was well, well placed, well trained. Mm. So like, he would start the year wherever his first run was, be it either Down Royal or Haydock. Um, he'd run at Christmas, he'd have a prep in the Aon and then go to the Gold Cup. Um, or Ascot, whichever his prep would be. But mm. four, maybe five runs in a season was still as much as you can go with a yeah. three-mile chaser. And you know, when, as he got older, he was able to take those five runs. But when they're younger, it's just not as easy. You want it, what you want is to try him. Everybody wants a great horse, but to have a great horse you have to have a sound horse. You have to mind them a bit to keep them sound and then try and make them great. Like I rode so many really good horses that didn't stay sound enough mm. to be great horses. Just didn't last or couldn't last. Or no, and didn't last. And that's part of a trainer's job. Like they're trying to, each trainer wants to train a great horse. And you're trying to maximize that. Like Whitty ran Hurricane Fly four, maybe five times a year as well, Morgiana. Leperstown on Christmas, Leperstown, Cheltenham, Punchestown, five. That was it, you know mm. what I mean? Like, but you've got to, like, he made, Qui you got Qui Viga to last by only running her twice a year. She, was, she couldn't take the third run. <laughs> yeah, when you think about it, like, when you think about it, yeah. But that's, you, you, you make greatness over time. Mm. You don't make them great in a year. No, longevity. Longevity. Yeah. And I can understand you know, some people's frustrations at the lack of clashes and maybe a lack of strength and depth that there is. But ultimately, if they're trained and nurtured and minded the right way, you will hopefully get great horses. Just back to the start, this is the second way room we were in. The old way room was over the far side as people walk into the track. This one's colder. It is cold. <laughs> it's a beautiful day and we're sitting in the colder room at that. <laughs> exactly, and uh, no offence Punchstown, but it is quite cold. Um, <laughs> I used to be in awe of all the English jockeys who used to come over. Okay, we we had our own oh. heroes in Ireland. We'd Conor Dwyer, who I always looked up to you, Charlie, you had John Shorts, you had great characters, Anthony Powell, but you get Graham Bradley come over, Norman, Richard and Woody, you Adrian, know, Adrian McGuire. End of the year, they'd be over, not a jolly, but they're over for the weekend. Yeah. They used to and they'd enjoy come in and like, even AP coming back to ride his song and. Do you write my Asta? 
first winner ever for JP. Good story actually in its own right. Um, Maestro ran the day before, was second to Cockney Lad in the really good handicap hurl as it was, and uh, Dad decided to run her next day. No declaration of riders back then, you know, he just put them on an hour before the first. Charlie's one who, who normally rode her and Conor Dwyer both booked for horses. I think Conor might rode Royal Marine maybe far to more in the yeah, race, maybe yeah. I think I off the top of my head. And uh, that got Tony McKay, so who was a young up and coming jockey obviously, but uh, it was his first winner for JP, so and, yes, uh, there was. the dam was synchronised. It was written in the stars, wasn't it? Amazing when you look back and I was only looking back in this morning and uh, Funny enough, the following October, rather and done seven twelve on her. But <laughs> she win? No, ah, I, Fran. I, I think that was more of a practice spin. But she gave me my third and fourth winner in my career. She won in Sligo, won in Wexford, and finished her career over fences with Conrad Ware in Sligo, and then was obviously the dam of synchronised. So but the old Wareham was the very same shape as this one. Mm. So like I can remember, like you said, Charlie would have been at the very Charlie Swan, the very opposite end where I would have started as an amateur, which was down the bottom on that far wall. <laughs> yeah. But I remember riding here on a one Wednesday afternoon in a maiden hurdle, twenty-two or three runner maiden hurdle. So we came across the middle, out onto the main race course proper. But we got to the bend, you know, I was seven pound glamour. I was turning the bend well before I got to it. But anyway, John Short was down the inside riding one of Kevin Prendergast. Obviously, I pushed two or three lads in, and they pushed in on top of him, and a bit of ball and screaming, so kept going. I, I finished wherever, so I came back in, and I was the only amateur in the room, so I would have been down there on my own. Six, I'm looking, John Short gets up, and he strolls down through the gap, and he strolls down to where, I, where I'm sitting. And I'm sitting there, just my back protector on me, waiting probably to ride in the bumper as well. And he grabbed me by the two straps of the back protector, right, <laughs> lifted me off the seat, and nearly had me hanging on the hook. <laughs> He started explaining to me what I'd done wrong. Hey, Benny. What, what I, hey, Benny. And what I wasn't to do again. And what he'd do if I did do it again. And then he just politely put me back down on the seat, turned around and walked off down the air. But I mean, look back at it now, like there'd be <laughs> ructions if someone did it. But like, that's, that's how you were taught back then. It was. And it was not tough love, but it was a safety thing as well, yeah, wasn't it? You it, know, was, it, like, it was an education. Mm -hmm. um, it was an education, but... Like you were talking about Miasta running twice. I can remember winning on Davenport Millennium, winning the Novice Hurdle mm. on the Tuesday, and running them again in the Champion Hurdle on the Friday. There was only three or four runners, and we yeah. chanced them and ran them again. Take, take the chance, yeah. But he didn't win much more. It was the end of him, as such, or the peak of him anyway. Peak of him anyway, mm. yeah. And you know, you look at things at the time, you think that's the right thing to do. Ultimately, it, it, didn't, it didn't work out that way, but look, there was, there was magic days here. And good horse was running again. Remember, in 2012, on the Wednesday morning, I was going to work seven o'clock ish, and Richie Galway's, Richie, who was on the track here, Richie's number coming up on my phone. I see, what's Richie want? It was, it was wet and windy, and he says, I think we're in a bit of trouble here. So I said, Jump to come over. He says, Yeah. So I turned around, went back home, got my wellies and rain gear, and drove across here to punch us down. So I met Brendan and Richie and Sean Ryan on the track. Mm. So they were worried about the wind. Uh, it wasn't raining at the time. Then it started raining as we climbed up to the top of the hill. So at the time we'd walked the chase track, most of the chase track was flooded. <laughs> I basically look, the wind is no problem, it's just the water. I said, we can jump the jumps as long as there's no water on the takeoff side mm -hmm. or the landing. Once we're not jumping out of a puddle and landing in a puddle, we'll gallop through the puddle, it's no problem. So uh, we went back to look at it. The last fence was going to have to be omitted. The second last was fine, not so bad. Back to the third last, that one be okay. Fourth last, take that one out. Fifth last, take that one out. Sixth last, out. By the time we'd gone back along, there wasn't enough fences to jump. <laughs> so, talking with Brendan and Richie and Sean, like, what are we going to do? So they said, look, we can cancel the chases. So there was two chases on an eight race card. So Luck the, luckily enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Gold Cup and the Novice Handicap Chase. So they had to be taken out and they were going to start with the conditional riders handicap hurdle. So, came in, whatever, had a bit of breakfast, went back out for another look. So, in fairness to Sean Ryan and the grounds team here at Punchestown, I think between 11 o'clock and the first race at sort of half three, they probably moved every flight of hurdles. Took them out of the ground, wings and everything, and moved them to somewhere where there was no water. Zigzagged or whatever. Zigzagged to yeah. take off to land it. And mm -hmm. it was wet and there was loads of rain. And I remember after about the third race sitting, I used to sit over there and Barry Gary used to sit here. And Barry was looking over at me thinking, are you sure? 
<laughs> and I was thinking, sure, it's only water, and it was. <laughs> and they raced through the whole card. But the Gold Cup was run on the Saturday then, because mm. they'd been called off on the of Wednesday. So I'd ridden China Rock in the champion chase on the Tuesday. He'd finished fourth or fifth behind size in Europe. Barry got on him in the Gold Cup on the Saturday, and he won. Max Morris. Max Morris. Three years ago, you walked in here. You knew it was going to be your last week of riding? Yeah, I knew it was going to be my last week. Um, probably hoping on the Wednesday to be my last day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, classical dream one on Tuesday. Wanted to ride Ken by in the Gold Cup. I was sitting next to the door where I had sat for years. Just on Ken by because you beat Album Ford on the day. You missed <laughs> Thank God I wasn't riding Album the year before. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, Paul Townend, but yeah, <laughs> uh, that was one of the. If you see bizarre things at different race courses, uh, that was unique, a unique moment. Um, Paul ran him out, but look, it was a, a measure of Paul. I was injured, and Paul came back here the following day and rode a treble. But I remember being in work on the Wednesday morning and into Willie's, and Paul went up to the gallop, and I was standing on the gallop, and Willie appeared, uh, arrived up, so the horses are coming out onto the gallop. And as Paul came, now he's working in Willie's at that time, probably eight years. Mm. And I remember looking at him, and Willie was standing there saying, do you know where you're going, yeah? Out here, turn right. And Willie started laughing, Paul started laughing. That was the end of it. Game over. Game over. Yeah. Yeah. And Casey was, David Casey was over there. He was having a right kick up. <laughs> but, um, uh, it was just, that was the ice broken and move on. Um, but that was, I know the big plus in riding for Willie. Mm. I would say Willie Mullins probably never had a crossword with Paul Hannan over that. That was the end of it. And um, album, you broke your leg off in Chatham, did you? I did. Um, that's why I was that actually year. not riding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, he just wasn't a lucky horse for me. But yeah, I broke my leg off album. Uh, came here then. And I broke it off Let's Dance here. Then I broke it off album in Cheltenham. Got through the following year. Won in Classical Dream. Came by. Gold Cup. Paul was riding album after winning the Cheltenham Gold Cup on him. I'd won on Ken by at entry. Um, probably had a big chance. Mm. Um, was hoping, I suppose, he had a big chance. But I, I probably can remember more about Punchestown and have had more of an affiliation with Punchestown than I probably do any track. Mm. And even now, with, with like the Pony Club, the Clare Pony Club is here. You were a pony camp. Yeah. We both were a pony camp. Well, I wasn't. You were <laughs> a pony camp here. But... Even now, like I was probably here four days last week mm. with the kids doing something with Pony Camp, with the Pony Club. Um, you know, and that's a huge part. I mean, the hunt is down there. The club is up for here. walking. Yeah, and mm. even through lockdown, like what Punchestown did for the community. Punchestown was open. So within five miles of Punchestown, people could travel. Mm. Like, there was thousands of people here using Punchestown just for walking. And then you had the, the HLC were here as well with the vaccination centre and a testing centre. I got my vaccination in, in the Champagne Bar. <laughs> in the Champagne <laughs> The Champagne Bar, that was the owners and trainers. Um, oh, you're, you were you're, in the Champagne you're, Bar, you're, you? you're upstairs, I'm in the, I'm in the poor level. <laughs> w, I was up there. Um, but look, it, it, it is an incredible place and I probably had envisaged that I would finish my career here. Mm. And to me, the Gold Cup is the biggest race and it worked out. Well, we couldn't do a punch sound without coming out to a jump that's named after you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not named after me. It's named after my grandfather. Uh, no, this is Ruby's double, but it is after my grandfather. He died on New Year's Day in 91. And Betty Moran, who owns Papillon, wanted to do something in memory of my grandfather. I'd imagine initially it was a race or something like that, but mm. I think Dad came up with the idea that maybe the old double, the original double bank in Punchestown is actually where the water in the track, you might be able to pick it up there, is down there. That's the old double, which is quite really quite narrow. Mm. So obviously with more bank races here, bringing it closer to the action, Dad thought this would be a good idea. And it was John Dillon um, who built it, but Betty Moran wanted something in honour of my grandfather, so the Ruby's double was built right in front of the grandstand. And look, it's wide, it's a good mm. bit wider than the bank below. And initially there would have been drains, but they've all been filled in on the bank course now for welfare. Um, so there, there, there's, there's just birch in front of them, but look, it's one big stride on it. It's a big, as safe as you can make a bank. And uh, it's a good jump. And it's part of the cross country course here, they jump 
that hedge going away, they dropped that one on the way back. Uh, that used to be Joe's water splash after Joe Collins, who was the clerk of the course here for years. I don't know what they call it now, Joe's hedge maybe? <laughs> it might be Joe's hedge, it's right, but pretty spectacular viewpoint if you're in the stands. Uh, often, you know, everybody gets into the stands, want to see the bank race, but how do you ride it? You jump it both ways, it's different so, tempos. I wouldn't think you asking the right fella. I had much luck in bank <laughs> races. Uh, no, uh, bank racing is about, the horses really have to know. You just keep your legs like you would be eventing across country. Mm. Just keep a bit of contact and keep the squeeze on. But the horse has to know to, what to do with his feet. And it's great for schooling horses. Uh, banks. Banks make horses look and make them move their feet. And um, in the bulger, I jumped a lot of banks within the bulger, but uh, definitely schooling over banks does does make a horse think for itself. Reinvigorates horses too. We've seen it obviously. We mentioned Tiger Roll. Um, and is very good at, at getting horse going again. Never rush you, Connor. Horse day one for Jessica Harrington on the flat in Limerick. He's still going around in these yeah, chases. There are, and obviously when you go Latouche is the longest jump race in the Irish calendar. Mm. So when you go that extreme distance, pace changes, and you know things slow down. All the horses get on the bridle, different jumps, twisting, turning, and yeah, it is unique. There's three bank races here during the festival week, and there's a couple during the winter, and there's a lot of maintenance to it. And obviously, if you get a really dry spring. Punchstone do a magnificent job watering, but they can't water the cross-country course. <laughs> Great covering the grass down it, isn't it? It's immaculate track, I must say, ahead of the festival. Even to look out at it. Mm. And Sean Ryan is the groundsman here. Like, the pride uh, that's taken in this place is unbelievable. Mm. Look at, you look how vast Punchstone is and how much ground there is to mind. But if you came here in the middle of June, like, it's just, it's always mowed. It's always immaculate. It's looked after so well. Like, they have one reservoir here in the middle, which they use for watering. They have another one uh, on the cross uh, actual cross-country course that's in behind the forest there. There's a river in there with, with, with uh, or a reservoir in there as well. Like, they make huge use of the ground they have. And they're going, they're going renovating. They're going making this place bigger and wider again. I mean, the home straight, which is the narrowest part of the track, has been widened by 30 yards and they're putting in a chute into the Black Hills for flat racing. They're all the time trying to make Punchestown better. And, continuous um, improvement. Continuous improvement. There, there's going to be a what, one mile chute, a mile chute, there'll be a mile flat track here with one bend. Mm. Um, probably not the greatest flat track in the world, Fran, was it? <laughs> not, on the, not on the flat, uh, the camera used to go away from you, but um, they used to have a five and a half furlong start in the sandpit effectively, that's probably where the new mile track is yeah. going, a chute, out of the back straight, straight up the side. I remember riding against High Chaparral and he got beaten in a maiden here by a horse called Hot Trotter. <laughs> don't think he was ever beaten again afterwards, but uh, yeah. that was, uh, that's what you got to take on in Ireland. Good education for horses. When they redo the track as they're planned to do, it will be a good flat track. It'll be a purpose-built track and uh, just the reality of keeping a place going 12 months a year nowadays. You look at the size of this place, I mean, when you close it down, in, uh, there's two jump meetings here in June, and it doesn't start again then until October. It's a huge facility not, not, to be, mm. not to be used. And, you know, especially with the calibre of people, caliber of people they have working here that are minding it. And um, I, I think it's fabulous to look at a race course of this side, this size, and see it so well kept. It just shows you the job that people are doing. There's a landmark. It's changed a bit since we were there now, the hunt stand. <laughs> this is where all the professionals go down to look at their horses. You know, you get the punters in the ring, the middle stand, this side, but you know, you get my father, your father, all the various racing heads, if you like, go down to look at the race. You could run into anybody down there. Yeah, and on, the old, on the old hunt stand, yeah. yeah. Couldn't be knocked, couldn't be moved, and they were building the new one. Had to leave the stand, that to leave the stand for Frank Berry, apparently. <laughs> oh, Frank's fault. <laughs>